I think it's profit on number one, the absolute necessity for developers to find new land. It's growth, the absolute necessity for large companies to find land to expand. It's the price of becoming global and a world-class city. When you see the Commonwealth Games or the, or the city pageant in, in a Philippine country or the uh, Olympics, who needs them? They will last three days and they will have an impact over millions of people over a large number of generations. So these large mega events, which are part of the seal of being a nice uh, world-class city, have a terrible cost and should be avoided. To become a world-class city, to become a global city, you need a large airport, and this will displace. You need a technological hub, it will displace. You need a free trade zone, it will displace. You need nice golf clubs for the new elite to, to play. This will displace and take a lot of, of water. You need large highways for the people living in nice residential areas to go to these new spots. You need a lot of malls. Again, you need a large number of five stars hotels. And probably you need gated communities to take security away. This is tremendously eating land and the land which is being eaten is either on ecological reserve at a tremendous cost or unfortunately where the poor have been reclaiming pieces of land over generations. So it's the model of building large world-class cities which to my opinion is uh, at stake and when I read literature speaking of you know the global cities, etc., as if it was a normal phenomenon without being absolutely critical. I say, what is the lack of engagement of all these people writing on, on world-class cities and not able to see the other face of it and the cost of it? And I think that we have to be very, very serious on that. If, as planners, we are not able to solve this problem, we are probably able to, to support the trend of cities growing, cities becoming part of them, world-class cities, but at a price which is unbearable from any perspective. Right, justice, equity. Um, so it's absolutely essential to be able to mediate, to be present and to stop evictions. I remember having a mid-career professional from uh, a Nigerian city who is part of, a, of, of the political family and he was in charge of evictions. The first time I presented the Santo Domingo case and the multi-stakeholder approach he was like, who are these guys, you know, questioning totally what he had been doing for years. And when we were in Istanbul working in an evicted place, at the end of the 10 days he said, if thank you for all this, and he gave $2,000 out of his own pocket. And the pocket probably were large, you know. <laughs> but still, he gave $2,000 for the kids to set up a small center to at least have something while evictions were taking place to get together, etc. Our role as teachers is to unveil reality, to generate critical knowledge and a little bit of tools to face this heavy challenges that uh, I mean, large number of cities are facing. What else can we do? It's up to the people, you know.